So now the heart is receiving blood flow again. The clamp is off and every part is receiving blood flow. The team are about to try and defibrillate the heart here. Um, and a peculiarity of this particular procedure is that they're going to have to use external paddles here. And there they go. As they go after those, uh, those electric shocks, those, those direct current shocks, uh, the heart has returned to its normal rhythm, uh, sinus rhythm, and is beating and looks pretty good. Esmail is alive, but until he wakes, it will be impossible to tell whether or not his brain has suffered any damage. We're all done, and Mr. Desbot is in ICU. The aneurysm was very large, and it had an area that was ready to rupture. It would have ruptured, I would say, in the near future. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that he's out of the woods. The next two days or so are a very important time. It's a huge operation, very serious operation, and we'll be watching him closely. Thank you. Right? I don't know how to thank you. You're very thank welcome. You very thank much. you. Probably we'll, we'll see you around. You, you will. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Nice you to meet you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you thank very much. much. The real risk of this procedure, feared by patient and surgeon alike, is that of permanent brain damage. It's this that I was most keen to ask Dr. Elif Teriades about once it was all over. John, looking at that technique, I think it's, it's fascinating that we can call people to such extremes, but what's even more interesting is that they seem to return to almost n a normal functioning of the brain. Um, I, I understand you've done a little research in that area yourself. First, we looked at all the patients, and then from them, we selected a subgroup of truly challenging occupations, and then we focused on them with a microscope with very detailed tests looking for any evidence of functional impairment, and we really didn't find it. The writers were writing, the musicians were playing, and uh, we really were able to document an absolutely equal level of performance after this dramatic period of deep hypothermic arrest. This really has been one of the most remarkable days I've ever spent in an operating theater. The, the thing that you have trouble getting your head around is that we're, what we're doing here is not just taking the heart out of the circuit and letting machines replace it all. We're arresting the whole system, the whole circulation and the brain. We're cooling down to the point at which you can't measure the activity of the neurons and the cells of the brain electrically or, or otherwise. There is no evidence during this whole period that he's alive, that, he, you know, indistinguishable entirely from someone who was dead during that period. Uh, and uh, it, you find it amazing that you can do that and have someone survive at the end, let alone be so completely themselves in addition. Before I move on, I want to find out if Esmail's operation has truly been a success. I love you, honey. How are I love you? you. I'm fine. I love you, Daddy. I love you. How are you feeling? How, how's it all going? OK, I have a lot, sir. I have pain. It's not easy. But I know it will be a good end. And I know that my problem has been solved. <laughs>